What's going on everybody? I am here at the official end or beginning of the Oregon BDR. Normally they run it south to north, so technically this is the end in Hood River, Oregon. For the next three days, I will be heading south. We'll see how far I make it, but I wanted to start here. This is the official start. And what's really awesome is the cruise ship is here in the background. You can see that. It's an old paddle wheel cruise ship and probably gonna walk over there and get some footage. It is a lovely but windy Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday afternoon. And I have until Monday. Monday I have to head home. So we're gonna see how far we can make it. I have no distance in mind no specific goals other than to see. I'm hoping I can make it to Sisters. After that, the wildfire situation right now is pretty bad, so I don't think it would be really worth it trying to go beyond Sisters at this point just because there's so many bypasses of closed areas of forest, so let's go check out that cruise ship. How cool is that? I've seen this thing several times driving by on A84, which you know we're just north of here. I think they're getting ready to take off because I just saw some buses leave and you can see a nice young lady on the deck up there, but I think they're getting ready to head off on a cruise. I'd really love to put the drone up, but if you've ever been in the Columbia River Gorge, you know, but if you haven't, it is very windy. I don't know if you can hear the wind. I'm hoping the little dead cat is doing its job well enough, but it is pretty windy and I just have the DJI Mini for, so that little thing would get tossed around like nobody's business if I put it up right now. So I was thinking about it until I got out here and once I got out and saw how windy it was, I'm not gonna chance it. I'd rather not lose my drone at the beginning of the trip, but I can hear them making announcements on the ship. So I think they're getting ready to leave. One of these days I'll have to uh, book a trip on this. I'm so glad the sun came out. It was cloudy all day. The weather said that it was supposed to be sunny, but the next few days, it shows nothing but sun. And I know that those days are few and far between at this point now, late September, the official first day of falls coming up in a couple days. So this is it. And plus I got a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that hopefully I will let you in on here very soon. But this will probably be the last major adventure for me for this season anyway. We'll see, maybe once things settle down after the holidays, might have time to do a some kind of little winter trip. We shall see. I'm gonna hang out here a little bit because my first camp spot or a couple camp spots that I have picked out are not too far from here. It's only, let's see, 10 after two. So it's not like I need to get to camp real soon here. Got plenty of time. It's only about maybe 20 miles ish from here. So I'm going to hang out a little bit here and see if uh, the boat decides to take off or not and maybe get some pictures. Well, I waited around for about 20 minutes and they still haven't even undone the ropes or anything yet. So I'm going to get on the road. This is a solo trip for me. Melissa stayed behind this time just because work obligations and timing and you know, this is a makeup trip because one of our dogs decided to pretend he was dying. So we canceled our Labor Day trip. This was supposed to be our Labor Day trip. So here I am making the trip on my own solo just to try and get one more trip in before weather turns bad. And like I said, all the other stuff we got going on. I'm going to get on the road. There is a viewpoint not too far from here called Panorama Point that I'm going to stop at. It is on the way on the BDR. I'm going to stop there really quick. And then once I check that out, it'll be time to hit the road and get to camp. So let's go check out Panorama Point. All this drive to Panorama Point is just pavement. So there won't be nothing too exciting until we get there, hopefully. But I'll give you something to look at. Okay, made it up to Panorama Point. Not too far from the marina there. It's only about a five minute drive, but you can see the absolutely stunning views that you are afforded for making the very easy drive up here. Off in the distance, we have mighty Mount Hood. So I didn't really do much research here. There's some things here. It says, uh, well, here, I'll let you see it.
All right, so it looks like it has to do with the power poles that are here. You walk inside here. After getting home and doing some research, the lines that head up the hill run for about 15 miles to the substation located in the Dalles. They then run across Panorama Point down into the valley for just over a mile and tie into the Hood River substation. Looking down into the valley gives you a glimpse of the many orchards. While once famous for its apples, in 1919, many of the apple trees were struck by a killing freeze. The local farmers then replaced the apple trees with pear trees, and now Hood River County leads the world in Anjou pear production. I was hoping to put the drone up again here, but it's still just a little too windy, and there's other people here, a couple other people here, so... I tend not to like to bother people with the drone, so we will keep it put away for now until we get out of the people area. I'm going to snag a few pictures and then we are going to get to camp. <music> Officially, we are officially on dirt. So I'm gonna see how the road goes, whether or not I think I need to air down. This seems like a pretty well-traveled road so far, so it's probably not gonna be too bumpy, but we'll see. So I'm gonna not air down just yet and see how it goes. some route I forget what it was called now and we were gonna take it for a little bit basically in the same area from Hood River down and we ran into a tree and at that time I didn't have anything but not to say that uh, I could do anything this time either because I forgot my chainsaw you're stupid usually this time of year it's not too bad by now everything all the deadfall and stuff is cleaned up so I just have to keep my fingers crossed that I don't run into a tree somewhere down across the road because I won't be able to take care of it. I'm really excited to explore this side of Mount Hood, I've yet to be over here. I don't know how much more I'm going to film before I get to camp. It looks like I actually still have a little more ways to go. I was hoping to actually be at camp right now, but I got a few more miles to go. So we'll see how this road holds out. You can see back there a little bit that there is some decent potholes, but then there's pretty good stretches. That seemed pretty good, so we'll see if it uh, deteriorates worse or stays the same. camp I had to do a little bit of a reroute the trail that I was gonna go down to the one campsite that I was most interested in was closed because of fire season this one's not bad it's got an established fire ring I didn't get quite up to it I want to leave access to the sky for the Starlink the only thing I don't like it's actually a really big site so technically someone else could come in here it's right off the main road which is right there so but better than nothing, I still found camp at a decent time. This was just maybe a quarter mile down the road from where I was going to turn off, so not too bad. So let's finish getting camp set up here. I 
you something. Trying to do this bed by myself is definitely not as easy as when you have a camping partner. I've walked back and forth across this thing I don't know how many times now. But that was the hard part, getting the mattress unfolded. Now we're getting the regular sheet on here. Trying to decide if I want to set up the diesel heater tonight. I'm not entirely sure. I'll round to the other side. Keep closing that door because it's a little windy up here and this site is really dusty. I already had one good gust blow probably dust through here. I just wiped out the floor a little bit. Trying to keep that door closed. The wind is blowing this way. Okay, that part's done. Now for the really hard part. So we got these blankets, these Pendleton blankets at Costco. They were on clearance a couple years ago. I think we got them for like 12 bucks. And man, are these things warm. We have two of them. This one seems to have become our main one. The other one's white, so I'm a little leery of bringing it camping. At least this one's dark and you know, you get any stains on it or whatever, you won't really notice it too much. It's actually a really warm blanket, so I don't know if I'm gonna set up the diesel heater tonight or not. I have no idea how cold it's supposed to get. I haven't checked what elevation we're at either, but let me get this blanket done and then we'll move on. All right, camp officially set up waiting to see if this wind dies down a little bit it's still pretty windy but there looks to be a little trail right back there so i might go exploring i got a little bit of water most importantly got the bear spray i don't know if this is bear country or not but it's probably definitely mountain lion country so we're gonna take a little walk over here and see if there's anything to see i mean come on man that's the stuff that really makes me angry. And there's no way for me to really take that out of here. If everyone wonders why public land is getting shut down, there's a perfect example of it right there. I don't know why people have to do that. I really don't. But I'm going to walk back in this little trail here and see. There is definitely a trail here. I don't know if it's a game trail. It doesn't look like it. I think people just come back here when they camp at this spot. It looks to be a pretty popular spot. I had somebody drive by and ooh, there's something interesting up here. There's a little cross up here. See that? I think it's a cross. Or it's a target shooting thing. I mean, it's a target shooting thing, but it's a cross and it's a bone. So I'm going to assume that it's for a dog, but you can see the dates here. February, July, looks like they used to come back. They haven't been up here in four and a half years. That's kind of cool. This must have been their favorite spot or something to come up here. So I'm right, you can see right there is where camp is at. As I made my way back to camp, the fatigue of the day was quickly overtaking me. The temperature was dropping quickly and the wind didn't seem like it was going to make an exit anytime soon. I made a quick dinner and retreated to the camper for the night. The morning would greet me with those same winds, only this time accompanied by a more stinging bite. <laughs> sleep very well it's windy this morning my eyes are watering as you can see I'm bundled up because it's cold um, I can't believe I didn't lose the solar panels it was that windy so I think I'm gonna skip a formal breakfast this morning and just get packed up I got some little snacky type food stuff so I think we're gonna go that route get camp packed up and get on the road so I'm gonna get started on that. I'm breaking down the diesel heater. Man, what a game changer that is. If you don't have one and you go out in the cold, I mean, it's probably in the 30s. And we've used it a handful of times. I probably last night and this morning was the most I've ever used it. It is so helpful, so I would highly recommend. We have the V-Bore. It's the eight kilowatt. So I can control it from right inside the camper. Gets it nice and warm in there and it sips fuel like 
I filled up the tank on this thing. I think it's just shy of a gallon. And I've barely made a dent, like running it for hours and hours. Plus I have another good gallon of fuel sitting there. I filled it out of that. I could conceivably run that thing for days and days. But yeah, if you can and the budget allows and your setup works with it, highly recommend the diesel heater. So I got this little, I had to modify the container, but again, Home Depot, and it fits perfect in there. I'll show you. And there you go, just like that. Everything tucks in, the exhaust tucks in on the side there. Just enough room, there's your fresh air intake. And the hose just fits in the front. Perfect. All right. I'm gonna finish getting camp put away. All right, camp is all cleaned up. We are gonna hit the road. Let's go. See how far I make it today. Government camp, there's a loop in the BDR that's kind of a long loop around that I don't know if I'm gonna do. There's a there's a shortcut around. If I do the long loop, it's about 60-ish miles to government camp. And then I'd be looking for camp after that, a little south of there. So I'm gonna see when I get to that loop, uh, what time it is, how I'm feeling. Because this trip, I have no place to be, no specific spot to get to in one day. The only thing I'd really be pushing myself for is to make it to Sisters. There's a spot just before Sisters called Spotlight Cave and you get there. I've seen pictures and other people post videos and it looks really cool. I'd really like to make it there, which at that pace I'd need to push about 60 miles a day, a little more maybe. We're just hitting the road now. Um, obviously if I skip that loop that will help in as far as getting distance and getting to Spotlight Cave before I have to head home. So we'll see how it goes. amount of time over in the Tillamook State Forest just because it's closer to the house so this is really my first time getting up over here on the Mount Hood side it's it's strange it everything looks the same but it feels different I don't know how to explain it you still have a bunch of Douglas firs and those types of trees out here and the terrain is really similar but I don't know something something about it it just it just looks or feels different I don't know I can't explain it, but I'm glad I've uh, been afforded this time to come explore this side. And definitely gonna do it more now that I've been over here. Coming up on the map here, there is a viewpoint and it's called Mount Hood Viewpoint. And I've been seeing it on and off, peek through the trees off to my right here. But if they pointed this out, I'm excited to see exactly what kind of view we're gonna get. Well, that was exciting. The trail got a little technical, but more so pretty narrow coming down that way. And of course you can't tell by looking at the GoPro because of the wide angle. Now I'm not quite at the waypoint that says Mount Hood viewpoint, but I'll tell you what, this is a little bend in the road. I don't know how it could get any better than this.
I mean, that is stunning. Stunning. I've never been over here. Wow. I'm, I'm just, I'm in awe. That's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Back in the car. So I'm actually coming up close to that loop that I was referring to. And if the road is like this, all the way to that little shortcut, I, I might just go ahead and take the shortcut because this is slow going like three miles an hour downhill. So we'll see what happens when we get to that shortcut. Well, that was interesting. Uh, there was a boulder in my way, but luckily I believe it's a forest ranger or somebody who works, they have the government plates on their truck. Thankfully they were coming back up and were able to help me move the boulder out of the way because I could not get past it. He is now being kind enough and backing down the road so that I can get to a turnaround point because he said down further up the road here, there's a couple logs across the way that might be too narrow for me to fit through. So, but he said I can get down to a campground and then go check it out. So hopefully he can get down there and see what's going on. But this is slow going, but I'm thankful he was there to help me because I, there's no way I would have been able to back back up the hill. We'll get down to the bottom and see what's going on. Just had to do a little bit of trail maintenance here. I got down here, the guy warned me about these logs. I got here, they were definitely too close. So, and I didn't record because there was actually a couple guys on adventure bikes waiting for me to get out of the way. They couldn't get past me, so I was trying to hurry. So I didn't want to sit here and film it, but. Basically hooked up tree savers to that big tree there and that other tree and pulled each end of this bad mamma jamma right here pushed pulled it over out of the way so now i should have plenty of room to get by i just got to back up because this end twisted a little bit into my into my wheel. This road is slow going. Um, I can't tell exactly how far, but I'm coming up close to the little shortcut that I'm hoping is actually a shortcut. And I will be taking it because of how slow this road is going and how rough it is if it doesn't improve. But doing that trail maintenance and moving those trees, that took me about an hour. So we'll see what happens fingers crossed could be a little closed trail or something and i'm gonna be forced to go all the way around anyway so we'll see when i get there just made it to the shortcut and the trail looks good so i am taking the shortcut i'm skipping a bunch of it but that's okay because i don't really have a plan like i said hopefully this uh just shoots over real quick looks like it's still gonna be a little technical here a little bit but uh, hopefully when I cross over, get back onto the main route, I'm hoping that that other trail is in better conditions. We shall see momentarily. Shortcut was a success. Fortunately, being back on the main route, on what I thought what, or was hoping would be a more well-maintained forest road, it is not. It is still very slow going, four or five miles an hour. So I have a decision to make real soon here. There's a couple spots up the road that look like maybe I could pull off and camp and I either stop early and call it a day and just relax or I really push and risk not getting to camp till something like seven or eight o'clock. So I'm gonna see what it's looking like when I get to these little areas coming up, if they are even a place that I could pull out and camp or if I'm gonna be stuck just pushing anyway, so. We shall see. Jeez. Well, I stopped at the first place of what I thought might be a camp, and there was an old trail. There was a kind of an established camp right there off the main road. But as I rounded the corner, the road improved drastically. And except for a few of these little whoop de woos here, uh, we're almost back to pavement. So I am pushing on because a good portion coming up is pavement. So should be able to make up some time. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
here by Clear Lake. It says there's camping here. So when I got up here, I was like, let me see if we can go down here. And sure enough, so I think I'm gonna be able to camp right next to the lake. Like, I think we're about to come out right now on the lake. This is gonna be so awesome. I think I'm gonna go right down here. Oh my goodness, tell me this campsite is not awesome. Okay, uh, I'm gonna set you guys down for a minute and get set up here. All right, just taking some drone footage, got camp all set up. Didn't have much sun for the solar because that tree line right there, the sun disappeared behind that pretty quick. It's only, let's see, that's 440. We're pretty much done with the sun. I mean, obviously there's sun out in the field still, but I've reached the length of my solar panel extension cables. So I think I'm gonna take a walk down by the lake. I was worried that it was gonna be dusty but it's, it's dirt, but it's more like sand than dirt. So we're walking towards the lake and this soil's getting wet quickly. So we'll see how far we go. I don't wanna sink in or step in some mud or something. I mean, it is kind of muddy. There's a little bit of grass. Well, I see some prints of something. That's what I'm really hoping for. There's. There's some other people around. There's some people walking up behind me there along. They were just down by the shoreline. And there was another vehicle that drove further down the road that I came in on. I have a feeling they're camped. I can't see them. I think, well, maybe I do. They must be further up. And this ground is getting softer and softer underneath my feet. So we might not be able to get much closer here. I really don't wanna get my shoes all muddy. Oh, yep, I'm starting to sink in, so this is about as close as we're gonna get. I don't wanna get any closer. I could walk along the shoreline over there, but I can see that it's muddy over there as well, so. I mean, man, not bad for camp night two, baby. There's setup over there. Okay, well, let me walk back before I sink in the mud. I had kind of a quick chintzy dinner last night. I just made sausages because by the time I got to camp and stuff, I was tired. I'm tired today. That wore me out, but we're having burgers tonight. Yeah, buddy. So I'm going to get these burgers cooked up. Nice, warm food. It's getting chilly again quick, so... I want to get some food in my belly. I didn't stop for lunch. I just basically had some trail mix. So definitely want to get some food in the old stomach. And I need to get some other footage this evening once it gets dark. That'll probably be exclusively like on my Instagram or TikTok or something. And hopefully sit around and enjoy some campfire and, and views of the lake. I tell you, those were some of the best cheeseburgers I've had after today. No lunch, stupid breakfast. <laughs> that was weird, my camera shut off. Anyway, weird breakfast. All right, my GoPro's wigging out. I don't know what's going on. It's saying it's out of battery. I don't know. I don't know if my battery's going bad or what. I just swapped it out for the other one that I had charging in the Bronco while I was driving. Trying to get this closing day two in here before the sun goes down completely. It's probably not hard to tell but it looks like we're about to get a really awesome sunset back there good food talk to melissa for a little bit and i should have known better i mean this isn't completely hidden lake or anything it's on every map i figured well maybe i'll get lucky but i noticed some people back up in the trees which was fine they were far away but then unfortunately someone decided to pull in like 50 feet away from me but that's what i get for 
choosing to be by the water, but it's okay. I know it's nature and I just wish he would have, you know, maybe pulled a little further away than so close to my camp. But anyway, I'm going to do a little extra footage later once the sun goes completely down and it gets really dark. So this will wrap up day two. It is getting chilly out here and we will see what day three has in store. I thought I was going to have to make a big detour near Detroit Lake, but I just checked the fire closures and it looks like the route through there is that area of the forest is open again i will double check it again in the morning just to make sure but i might not have to do the big bypass on on the highway the main highway so we shall see what day three brings as light turned to dark and that chilly mountain air moved in on night two i retired to the camper my body exhausted but my belly full and spirits bright Day two had definitely taken its toll on me. Despite that, I was fully looking forward to the coming days and what other wonders and challenges the trail would throw at me. I would find out soon enough as the Oregon BDR was just getting started. I hope you join me for part two of my adventures on the trail. If you want to continue following my adventures in the wild and back at home, consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my videos. I want to thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Caught behind the nation blinds How to reach for the city lines This ain't where I belong Ain't looking me more than what I've become I've been running east Looking for something Digging deep since now What I thought was gone was sitting in my pocket in plain sight all alone. I think it's time for me to go burn all bridges. All I know, I got lost along the way, fell between the foam, pulling stitches. Time to let. I cheated a little bit. This is gonna date me, but it's a Motown kind of day. It's getting a little tight in here. I only got the one camera. I'm scared myself. Oh no. Like I know this is gonna blow out the GoPro pretty bad. Dang, this tree was huge. And just like that, it's like I was never here. Don't look before you leave. What you give, you get to keep. So long, farewell, bye-bye Let's have a toast for those lost old eyes